now here's one thing, and you've been critical in the past, Enzo Amore, there's been stories about him being kicked off tour buses by Roman Reigns, told to leave locker rooms. Do you have any stories regarding Enzo Amore backstage and maybe the reason why people might not, might not be too fond of him. I know you've been very critical about him in the past. Give us some more insight onto what's up with Enzo Mori backstage. Well, a lot of it is uh, basically the a person's personality will come out more when they think they're bulletproof. If you think you can do no wrong, that's when you're going to be honest, and that's sometimes when you play your hand. I I freely. I, I don't really hide my personality from people. I am who I am. I don't try and politic. I don't try and make nice with guys just so they'll like me. I, and that may have been to my detriment professionally, but I'm not here to make you feel good about yourself. That's not why you hired me. I'm, I'm here to do my job. It doesn't mean I'm going to be rude or mean or unpleasant, but if you're expecting me to sit there and kiss your ass for 45 minutes just so you'll listen to what my idea is, I'm not going to do that. That's just not me. It's not in my nature to, to do that sort of thing. I'm not a politicker. I never have been. Enzo is the type of guy who goes out of his way to politic, but he only politics as long as he thinks he has to. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll be nice to you as long as he thinks it's to his, uh, to his uh, advantage to do so. Um, <clears throat> it was one of the things I remember seeing was when uh, Fergal, when Finn first showed up, uh, Enzo immediately made it a point to buddy up to him. And he's telling him, yeah, bro, you know, you want to get chicks, you got to, like, move downtown, live downtown. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, that... that Great Enzo impression, by the way. Continue. It's very, it's very stressful on the vocal cords. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's telling him to, this to Finn, like, yeah, you want to get chicks, you got to move, live downtown, man. You get all, there are all the bars down there. You can walk to the bars. And all I'm thinking is, okay, Finn was a model for Armani in Japan. That was an actual side gig he had when he was over there. He is handsome guy. He's got nine million abdominal muscles. He's got the Irish accent. That guy could go to a Buddhist monastery in the highest point in Tibet where there are nothing but men, and he could still pull chicks. Like, he, does, he does not need pointers from a guy whose biggest career highlight was working as a dishwasher at a Hooters. You know, it's like that's, that's not the person who should be giving him advice on women. So, but like I said, that was his whole thing. He went out of his way to make friends with Finn right off the get-go. But he was doing it because politically he knew that would be a good move. He wasn't doing it just out of out of sheer, you know, hey, this guy's cool. We're getting to know each other. We get along. And that's kind of his way. He's very much a, a manipulative person. It's very obvious to people, I think, that that's what he does. So when it becomes apparent when he thinks he's hot shit and he's, oh, I'm making all this money and I'm so over, everyone loves me. Dude, you got to remember, your, your, your whole deal is kind of – got a short lifespan. Like that's the thing to me is uh, different isn't always good, but good is always good. And if you're a good wrestler, you can always fall back on that. If you're a good talker, admittedly, the thing with talkers is if they don't have a good match to back it up, people will start to get bored eventually of the talking. The bell, I have one of my favorite sayings is the bell has to ring. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what angle or vignette or promo, whatever appears before the match, sooner or later that bell will ring. And if you cannot get it done inside the ring, you are going to fall short. And there are a lot of people that will look at like, oh, what about Roman Reigns? Like, Roman is actually a good wrestler. You can't see that because you're blinded by your hatred for his push, which if you would actually just let go, you would see he has some incredibly entertaining matches. But if you legitimately can't follow through with a good match, like... Not to knock on the guy, but like Hogan 2007, or you know when he was in TNA, whatever year that was. Mm-hmm. When he was at the point where all he could really do was fall down and bleed. There's a point where you have to say, look, I shouldn't be excited when I hear your music and then sad when the bell rings. Because I know what, it, what the match is going to be. And he falls in that category where he isn't a good wrestler. We're talking about so, Enzo, not Roman here, by the way. Yeah, not Roman, no, Enzo. Yeah. <laughs> so, where, so, so you're in that position where because he can't really get it done in the ring... But he thought for years by just if his if people liked his promos and if he was friends with everybody he'd do fine and to a certain extent he has he's definitely made, making a good living. It's just there's going to be that shelf life on it and if you start rubbing people the wrong way, as often guys do when they start to think they're above the rules or above the law, you're gonna you know you're gonna be gone. You're gonna be in that position where sooner or later people aren't gonna want to work with you. People aren't going to want to have you around, and eventually, you know, being the the party guy is going to be really silly looking when no one wants to party with you. You know, 
Is is he one of like the the main party animals backstage? Because judging by just looking at him on social media, he's always out and about. He's at the club. He's at this you know place. Is he like the main party guy backstage? No, that's Mojo. That's Mojo. Okay, yeah, I forgot Mojo. Yeah, no, Mojo should. No one. Him. Yeah. No exactly. one on earth parties like Mojo Rawley. No one. The man is inhuman. It's amazing. <laughs> and getting back to Enzo. Have you witnessed anything where, say, Enzo's been uh, told to like, leave, leave a locker room or kicked off a bus or anything like that? The only one I ever saw, it wasn't anything like that, um, but Enzo was trying to, was was talking about uh, when he broke his leg in developmental. When we uh, again, it, this was tribute to the troops. That uh, that was the other. That was the one I remember specifically because this was after uh, the brand split. Because I know capital punishment was before it. Tribute was after. Um, so tribute to the troops is happening. We're in DC and Enzo's talking about how, uh, Callisto broke his leg when they were in developmental and Manny, who's the nicest guy in the world. Like Callisto is an absolute sweetheart. Anyone who has a bad thing to say about him is a complete liar and a jerk. Um, so Manny goes, no motherfucker, you broke your leg cause you don't know how to wrestle. Like Manny just straight called him out. Is this when he was in the wheelchair? Yeah, um, he, here's the thing. Some people said that he claimed he caught his foot in the canvas, or he blamed his shoes for it, thing, or his boots for it. The reason he blamed his boots was at the time, Bill DeMott had a rule that if you wrestled in, or first of all, he wanted everyone to wrestle in boots. Mm-hmm. And he said, if you wrestle in, if you train in, if you wrestle in boots, you train in boots. So when Enzo broke his leg, he claimed, he actually had a doctor write a note, he bragged about this in the locker room. Stating that he should not be training in wrestling boots anymore, he should be training in sneakers. Oh, uh, so is that how he got to wear the sneakers, or what? Yeah, that was how he got. It. He'd already at that point started wearing sneakers in the ring, but he was still required to wear boots when he trained. Okay. In the same way, Rusev had, tra- had to train in boots, even though at the time he was wrestling barefoot. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole reason he claimed it was he the the boot that caused him to break his leg was purely a, a maneuver to avoid having to wear boots and training ever again. Wow. Yeah, yeah in the same way he. Uh, like as a lot of the time, this is this is what you have to consider is that because I there have been people who claimed, oh, I've heard Enzo say this. Like, yeah, he said both things. That's what you have to remember is that he'll say he'll tell different versions of the story. Sometimes he's very honest and sometimes he lies. I've sat in a room, me, him, and Becky Lynch doing social media training, and heard him straight up lie about how Triple H found his uh, promo video online. And then there have been other interviews where he said honestly how he did it. That was the that was tri- like the same trainer who sent it to yeah. Triple H though. Yeah, Joe DeFranco. Yeah, yeah that was. So. But, but depending on what version of the story you hear, the one he told that day, he told him that Triple H found it online himself. He did not say that Joe DeFranco sent it to him. Four, five, 